Right, guys, welcome back to part two. We're going to continue the conversation with Ife De Baker, and I hope that you're getting something valuable out of this episode. Hi, you're listening to Stretch Street. Podcast. Stretch Street Podcast. Stretch Street with the Energetic EJ. With the Energetic EJ. With the Energetic EJ. Don't stop listening. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Stretch Streets. 2017, we now give birth to my son, who was, I mean, his birth, everything was fine. But when he was now four months, you know, we wanted to now introduce, um, of course, formula into his diet. And then that's when we now discovered that the formula we bought, I mean, he started having skin reactions, he was having blisters. And I mean, I mean the science, the, the medical background in me just... Picked it up immediately, note, like picked something, it up immediately is, because something is something is off. Mm. So we, we checked, we checked the packaging and we discovered that okay, there's wheat in it. And I'm like, okay, wheat are these signs of wheat allergy? You know, since so you I have also experienced it when you were growing up. When mm. I was growing up. So I said, okay, let me stay, let's stay him off anything that has wheat. So we started making sure we look for any formula that is free from wheat. So we go for a formula that maybe is based on millet, formulas that are based on corn, formulas that are based on, let's say, cassava granules, like a tapioca. And it was doing fine. But along the line, as we started, I started growing up, it was now one, we discovered that he was still having these allergies. So we started searching. We discovered that even, it might not necessarily be just wheat, but even there are so many grains that are also in the same class of wheat, like your semolina. We discovered that semolina, yes, is actually in the same class with wheat. We discovered that barley, which is, you know, barley wheat. So any, so now we used to take conflict. We discovered that some of these conflicts, they are flavored with malt. Malt is a byproduct of barley. So it will have a reaction. Wow. We discovered that if we buy um, sausages for him to eat with his bread, some of these sausages, when we read the labels, they will write fillings. Ingredients, we'll see things like cereal. When we now go down, we saw that those cereals are actually, they bulk these meats up with wheat uh -huh. to make them, so you'll be surprised. The food industry, you know, that's why when you read labels, sometimes all these labels, they don't write everything. They'll just write, they might write coloring EX something. Some of these colorings, they are carcinogenic, but they will not write it there. Wow. You know, so that's why I always tell myself that just because something says uh, FDA approved doesn't mean it's safe for you. You know, mm. like in fact, and this goes back to even me being a pharmacist. Sometimes I, I remember then when I used to work in the hospital, when doctors would say they want this particular medication. And I'm like, okay, you want this particular medication. What if we now discover that this medication you are hell bent on wanting would lead to some kidney damages to this patient? Would you still want that? Would you go for the alternative? You know, you go for the alternative. So there is no need. So, you know, of, uh, like, and I'll say it to, you know, there, it's big corporations. The big corporations are making so much money. So you hardly find them sponsoring anything that has to do with special food preferences. Because to them, they're not making much money from it. From it. It's not yes. lucrative. It's not mm. lucrative for them. You don't see big you know, see pharmaceutical companies sponsoring the use of supplements because it's not, I mean, it's, it's against their money. own make money making yes. schemes. They are, mm -hmm. not, they are not looking at, they are, their own line of treatment is let us look for the fire and let us douse the fire. They're not looking at, okay, what is costing these fires in the space? We don't in care. The first place. Let the cause no. continue. We will know <laughs> what antidote you know? it. Wow. Yes. And that's why the same thing goes with doctors. Doctors will say, Oh, why are you taking supplements? Why are you taking vitamins? You are eating healthy. You are eating, your, your food has all the benefits. But I tell my, some of my clients that, can you, your body says you need so, so, so amount of vitamin A, B, C daily. 
Are you, first of all, even taking your vegetables regularly? How many, okay, when last did you have your, I'm not saying go and buy your packaged orange juice because you don't know what they've added to it. When last did you go to the market and say, okay, every day I'm taking freshly squeezed orange, nothing added. When last did you say, okay, every morning I'm having pineapples, I'm having watermelons regularly. Even the vegetables that you are saying you are eating, do you eat them? When last did you have a bowl of salad? Even they say, okay, as we, you know, we in Nigeria, that we take our vegetables, how was it prepared? You need to know that these vegetables, little heat, well, they keep their nutrients. <laughs> you will cook your vegetable, you put cook, it on cook. fire, you will cook, cook. And you say you're eating vegetable. <laughs> you're not eating any vegetable. You're eating <laughs> you know, so that's why you need, you need to supplement. That's why they're called supplements. They're not saying they are food. They're just supplementing So they're not saying they are meal. food. Neither are they saying they are drugs. They are yeah. supplementing. They are, they are, they are supplementing. replacing the, the, the nutrient that you don't already have. Yes, because sometimes you have your rice and stew with chicken. The tomatoes that has your antioxidants, that has your leucophane, because tomatoes is very rich in leucophane. Your carrots that has beta carotene is a very powerful antioxidant. You, sometimes you eat them, but you don't eat them regularly. Because just as the way you need food in your system to give you energy for your daily activities, you also need these antioxidants daily because you are exposed to the elements. Do you know that a lot of Nigerians don't know that they need to be using sunscreen? Let's even just talk about how yes, they need sunscreen. That Please, is we have plenty. Thing. We have plenty on the table because, like, <laughs> what's the point? Well, let some beat us. You know, it has stayed. <laughs> we are okay. <laughs> Mm. Mini sunscreen, and that's why it's called that you now be seeing people in their 70s jogging on the in their estates. It's already too late. It's now in your 30s, your 40s, you know, to live an optimum life. You can live till 90, very agile, but it is what you do with your body now. You know, though let's even not even talk about allergies, let's even talk about your body. Your body is a machine that when it was in its prime, that's between your between the day when you were born and your 20s, it was in its prime. When you're reaching 30, you're your play too. 30, 40s, you're already in the play too. So the way you used to expose yourself in your prime, you cannot expose yourself when you're in the play too. Because at the play too, your body just like, just leave me. Just let me be. It's like, your, you know when you just buy your generator? When you first buy it, you can put on your AC, but depending on how many uh, power um, house they had, mm. you can put on your generator, so you can put on your AC, you can put on your TV, you can put on your fridge freezer, but by the time one year, two years, you discover that when you put on your AC, it would, it would make a sound. Like, the load time, is becoming it, too much. It, mm. Too much, because of wear and tear. Mm. But your generator can still last long, as long as you always you service it or you service it, then you replace all those those bolts, those um rings that are already because there's no how it will wear out. It's, wear it's out. the same, it will wear out. All your vintage cars, the reason why you still have them exist is because the parts that they were in those cars in the 70s and 60s, they're not the parts that are in them now. They the changed. body is still fine, they've changed the internal parts. So it's the same thing with the body. Hmm. If you want your body to last long, you have to nourish it. Hmm. And it's not about, it's not by your eba. <laughs> it's not by your, no, it's the, in fact, the food you eat, what your body needs is the vitamin E, the vitamin C, the iron, the calcium, the protein from the right soul. It's not, it's not really the seasoning. It's not the maggi. It's not the sweetness. And so food. sometimes some of these things don't even have enough of those nutrients because yes. also of the, like you said, industrialization. Yes. The, uh, the what did you say the other time about uh, altering of some of the DNA? Yes, they've changed uh, them. Yeah, they've so them, exactly. Know? So most of these things don't even have all the nutrients there. Yeah. Hence yes. the need to actually, you know, have supplements so that you know yes. can st your body can still have the amount of um, vitamins that it needs. Yes, now, can you yes. land us on this story of how, you know, from from all the stories you've talked about, you know, how you kept digging and digging. It felt like a never-ending 
hole. <laughs> like a rabbit hole. <laughs> Do you understand? And for me, as you spoke, it, it's a bit scary, honestly. Mm -hmm. Now, this is you who are in the medical field. You are, uh, you are a pharmacist. So you kind of um, have that affiliation or that understanding, plus the fact that you already experienced something close while you were growing up yeah. as a child yeah so those yes. those things gave you those alerts for you to know oh mm -hmm. something is wrong here let me find let me find so imagine for somebody who has no clue of mm -hmm. these things like you like as you were speaking i'm like do you know how many people have suffered from allergies and they have no clue that they were allergies some will mystify it and say it's village people that are following them some mm. will mystify it. because again imagine you, you're just you just suddenly your body is itching or your mm -hmm. body is well from nowhere say hey my enemies are after me you know <laughs> so they have no clue that allergy is a thing to be looked into and like you said as far as hey sausages the thing that they used to do the sausage can you know cause an effect to somebody who is eating mm. how what so what did you come up with but importantly, as you share those stories, kindly help us highlight some of the life lessons that you have taken away from them, even as you educate us, because honestly, this is education for us as well, like helping us be, become aware of the yeah. things that we are overlooking when it comes to what we eat, especially, and what our body are susceptible or acceptable to. Yeah. So as you share mm. and go into it, just as at every point, pick out Pointers. some of the life lessons, yes, that you've learned from me. Thank you so much. Okay. So for me, one of one thing that has, has actually kept me in my mission is one day I just sat down and I said, okay, one, I want to empower people to make better food choices. I mean, that basically summarizes it. Now, so I'm not here to say, oh, ice cream is bad for you. Oh, don't have your pizza. Because I mean, I mean, I mean, this is life. I actually take pizza, you know. But what I just want people to understand is that, you know, your the choices you make. It's the power is in your hands by the choices you make. Now, I I just place this illustration for people that care to listen to me. I said, do you want to live in your sixties, seventies, popping pills? For the rest of your life. I mean, even when you have malaria, for us in Nigeria, when people have malaria or maybe they have an infection, to take to finish the cost the of dose. treatment is an issue. <laughs> Patient compliance is so poor, and that's yeah. why you know drug formulation. They're always looking at okay, how can we make patient compliance improve? Because the challenge is that if you're not, if you don't comply with your medications, if you come down with that that um, um, disease again, there's a chance that the initial medication might not work again because your body has developed, either your body has developed resistance or the infection has, the, back, the um, causative agent has developed resistance. So you have to do something stronger. And sometimes when you use something stronger, the side effect might also be worse. So, you know, so I always say this, that I want people to, I want to help people to, I want to empower people basically to make better food choices. So the power is in your hands, you know. So there's, a, there's an adage that most people say, they said, it's something that will kill me. But I feel that is said in ignorance. Oh, die, not have... die. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to live a happy life. You want mm. to live a fulfilled life. You want to, you want to end your, your years agile. Even if you're going to go, you want to go at, on your own terms. That, oh, I've run my race, I've finished my course, it's time and to I'm go. And I'm ready to transition. I'm ready. You don't want to be, you don't want to be wheeled to the toilet. You don't want to be, you don't want to be fed with a, with a tube. I mean, what kind of life is that? You know, so for me, that's what started the journey. That, okay, now, would I say that I'm perfect? No. There are days that I say, okay, I feel like eating meat pie. And I'll go for it. But that is not my lifestyle. I try to ensure, so, so one thing I'm going to say is that first, you must ask yourself, do you, do you want to live your life on your optimum best? Do you want to live your life on your optimum best? That's the first thing. So you have to, because the thing is that you must know your why on why you do this thing. And it's not just about even food, life in general. What is your why? What drives you? 
So that will keep you going because sometimes this journey is not easy. You know, mm. I mean, there, there are days I remember then when, in fact, there was a time we stopped taking my, we stopped going out because when we go to eat trees, there's nothing that, that is on the menu for my son. Yes, because if now, if you want to go to some of these popular eat trees, you don't know what they fry their chicken in. Mm. They might have used that same oil to fry chicken that has been coated in flour. Sometimes some of these um, eateries, they are the, the, the food that is served is actually from a factory that has processed it. You don't know the ingredients that they processed, processed the food in. Now, abroad, they are becoming more aware because of litigation. You know, litigation has made a lot of them step up their game. Nobody wants to be sued. So they write everything boldly on their packages. So the thing is your why. Then the thing is, I always tell people that also you should be ready to be empowered with information. Mm. There are so many information out there. In fact, there are some information that I've read that they said vitamin C actually even causes cancer. You'll be surprised. But again, is that but that that's the thing. That's let me let me just pause you there. That's the thing. Because I feel like that's why people just, you know what, see, all die and die. At the end of the day, nobody's <laughs> going to transition and leave this world to the next mm. realm without dying. So let's just enjoy our lives as we can because again is there so many things coming up at some yes. point they were like egg is good is good is healthy and the next thing no egg is bad so which do we go with how do we mm. know which is you know which is good and which is bad like there are too many information out there that can cause confusion or cause fear and we do not mm. want to live in fear so how would you let's come to that like how, how would you help people what would you say to somebody like a parent for example who is not even sure who does not know oh but i know that my child every like it's a lot to unpack here honestly yes. because yes. some parents or some of us are not even aware enough to know that every time this child eats this thing this thing happens we don't even know to mm. be able to now say oh this is the cause of it like every time this thing happens this is the effect we don't even know. So what would you say to people like who are like absolutely clueless about these things? And to be honest, they are like just not interested because again, it's like, you know, the same is the same reason why people from Nigeria would rarely go for medical checkup because it's like, please, I, yes. don't, want to, I don't want to know. Mm. I'd rather let it happen, bitch. Like, hey, I have a dick. Ah, hey. Okay, done. For me to walk into the hospital with my mm. two legs, and then they will not tell me that something ah, I don't want to see. <laughs> the fear of like, let me not just want it, right? What would you say to them when it comes to mm. allergy and what they eat here? Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, that's a very beautiful question you asked. One thing I discovered with my 15, in my going to 16 years of practicing, especially, and luckily for me, I practice both in retail and community practice, and I've worked in a hospital. I discovered that people want to be empowered with information. I mean, let me be honest with you. Every time I educate clients, they are so grateful. Everybody wants to be empowered. It's almost like, okay, it's almost like you have a laptop. When you first get the laptop, you know the on button. But if you get an IT person that shows you so much more that that laptop has to offer, you are blown away. And you're like, wow, so just this little device can serve me so much. So I think the, the, the challenge is that the people in the sector, which is the medical sector, the health sector, they're not doing enough to empower people with this information because they, like I said, they don't see the relevance. They don't see what is in it for them. And that's why abroad, especially in the foreign countries, like the European countries, um, America, litigation has made them wake up. You know, abroad, America. Okay, now why did we start health and safety um, agencies in Nigeria? Because abroad, health and safety is key now. Because if you are if you're a cleaner and you're mopping a, a section of the floor and you don't put the caution sign there and somebody passes, he visibly sees that you're mopping. He visibly sees that the leg is, the, the floor is wet, but he still chooses to pass and he slips. You know that you are, so, you are, you are, you are liable for damages and they will sue you and you, they will win in court. So a lot of us in Nigeria, I think maybe because of the challenge of the economy, 
I mean, let's be honest, the economy is quite challenging. So people are just looking for what to eat. I mean, let's just first eat. So people don't even want to care. That, so that's the challenge I discovered. But still, most people that I've met, whenever they come in contact with such information, because you know what I, what I always tell them is that when you are empowered with this information, it even saves you money. If I hear you clearly, yeah. what you're saying now to parents or people generally who are listening to this or watching this, when they're like, okay, like, so what do we, like, what do we do? Because there's so many information, too much information. I'm not even sure where to start from. Again, you've, you've like creatively highlighted some of the challenges, you know, why people don't pay attention to these things. But then the question is how, or what should they do? What is one, okay. two, three things that they can do? So with all the challenges, let me put it like that, because you've pointed some of these challenges out right now. Mm -hmm. With all those challenges that are well glaring, how can they, what can they do to still move the needle forward in regards to being particular about what they eat and be sure that, you know, whatever it is that they are eating is nourishing to their body and then they are not facing allergies that they are not even aware of. What can they do? Okay, now, what I, one of the first things I'll say is that be curious. You know, be curious. And what I'm saying that is that, you know, sometimes there's this, there's this thing that I've heard. They said, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. If you are really interested in such information, when you go on that journey, you will connect. Now, okay, let me start with this. Uh, let's, okay, go to parents that are in churches. There's always a, 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 a women's forum. You know, there's always a women's forum. And most of the time, I discover that most times, how have I even been able to get clients that have come to work with me? It was why maybe a, a woman had an issue with her child. She saw my post somewhere and she got interested and she was like, okay, can you tell me more? And I was able to formulate something for her. Then another thing again is, even if you don't know what to do, you can, first of all, at least go to your primary healthcare provider. Whatever information they give you, they will always refer you to a consultant. Now, with our case, because I will always like to take it to a personal point, with our case, we were just assuming we're, there was nothing to back up our claim. You know, we just felt that okay, if I introduce my son to to wit, he would have reaction. But we still had to see a pediatrician. It was when we now saw the pediatrician. We now he now ran a test that now showed that indeed. My son has food allergies. So we're now like, okay, so it's of a fact now. So you can't just sometimes assume that, okay, oh, am I just, is it all in my head? You have to see a medical professional to certify that, okay, all this is not in your head. Because there's no how. You always meet a medical professional that is, it might not even be grounded in that knowledge. He'll always refer you. Because from there, we now were referred to a dietitian. You know, and of course, with my own background knowledge, I did more research. And then that was where I was able to now discover products that I could use. You know, I could, I did, it wasn't as if, and, and I, I must say this, a lot of times people are afraid that, okay, after we've discovered this solution, this problem, do we have a solution? You'll be surprised that all the ingredients I use are locally sourced. They're not foreign. You know, so first of all, when you are, when you have discovered that you have this challenge, you must see a medical practitioner. From the medical practitioner, they will now refer you to a consultant that would help you run a test to show that, yes, indeed, you have these allergies. Then when it now comes to a solution, definitely you have to go out. You have to seek knowledge. Just as the way you, before we became doctors, engineers, lawyers, we had to seek knowledge in university. So you have to go out and seek knowledge. Look for forums. Now, there are a lot of forums out there. Diet, 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 I think the diet, uh, dietitian community, they have a body in Nigeria. I don't belong to it. I'm not yet sure. But even if you go to pharmacies, if you go to supermarket, if you ask around, because like yesterday, I went to a supermarket and I saw gluten-free snacks on the aisle. I was so surprised. Now, people now are more aware that people are reading labels now. So labels, you'll be surprised. Even labels in Nigeria, they're now writing gluten-free dairy free on it because people are well traveled now people are reading things online people are watching the news they are hearing they are informed i know now with the advent of social media one post about your product can destroy your reputation True. so people are becoming more deliberate about what they put out there yeah nobody wants because you know bad news travel fast 
So if you say, oh, I'm targeting the market that has gluten issues, you must ensure that your product, your, your packaging is well labeled with that. So mm. parents that have these issues, see a medical practitioner. You can even go to a pharmacy. You can ask the pharmacist that, okay, I'm having these issues. Can you direct me to where I can get more knowledge on what to do, on how mm. to treat this? Then, of course, by the time you see a medical practitioner, he would also refer you to a consultant. That con- like we now, when we had the challenge with our son, we saw a dermatologist who actually now told us the condition my son was. So we had to actually go through some treatments. And uh, from there, we're now introducing new uh, meals to meals him. Meals to him. Fantastic. Yes. And from there, I mean, we were able to solve our problem. Mm, fantastic. So um, as we round off this session again, I'm really curious to know if there are any specific life lessons that this journey has taught you. I know here and there you might have mentioned it in the way that you said your story, but again, it's that some people just prefer for things to be itemized, right? Mm-hmm. So that they can go yeah. away with that, like, oh, okay, this is what I'm taking out from this conversation. What are some mm-hmm. life lessons that your journey so far has taught you? Just share a couple, one, two, three with us okay. as we round off the session, yeah. Okay, one of the things I would say is that the first thing I got to understand from every challenge I face is that your 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 problem is actually it's it's how do I put it this way now? It's a there's a bigger picture in that seemingly challenging problem that you have. There's a bigger picture. You know, it's not and it's not about you. There's a, there's a bigger message out there, you know. That's one thing I realized that, you know, when we're going through the challenge, if I, when I was going through my own challenge, I was asking myself why. But when I now had my own son with our challenge, I now discovered that there was a bigger purpose to this. There's a bigger purpose. So, I mean, that's one thing I learned. There's a bigger purpose. It's not about me anymore. There's a big, that, in fact, there was a day I was driving out and I was looking at the, the thousands of Nigerians that I see on the streets. And I realized that a lot of them have medical challenges. But just because they don't know how to get the right information. So what role am I playing? And so that's why I'm telling you, if I really I saw, and you see, and that's the thing about when the, the, the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I just stumbled upon your post. And I just said, oh, this is another way for my voice to be heard on this. That I should not say, oh, am I an expert? Oh, do I have the qualifications? Oh, is anybody going to critique what I'm saying? Is more that there's a life that I'm saving from this information when it goes out there. Now, let me just say this. There was a child, in fact, that, that, the, this story I'm saying, the mother has turned it into a foundation. Her son actually had gluten allergies. In fact, his own was so severe that he carries, there's a shot he carries around, epinephrine. It's a shot that actually helps to stabilize the immune, immune response. Because some people, when they have their own immune response, they can, they can die from it. It can lead to death. So he carries a pen. So anytime he eats something that he shouldn't eat, they quickly give him a shot. They went, to, they went on vacation. And they already told the chef in the restaurant that we have this allergy. So please ensure that whatever you are bringing to our table doesn't have anything with wheat. Unfortunately, I think maybe the spoon they use, or maybe I don't, I really can't remember the story, but the child ate it and he went into an anaphylactic shock. With the pen at their disposal, the child still choked because his esophagus swelled up and he, could, he, he couldn't breathe. So he died from, I think, exp- expatiation. So, I mean, and he was, I think, maybe 10 or 11. He died. And this, these are foreigners. These are not even, these are, I think they're Americans or so, or maybe wow. Europeans. I can't remember. Yes. So, you know, so the mother now started a foundation mm. on that case. So I think she started that, okay, badges. People should wear badges that I'm, I have gluten allergies. Then let me even show you. Children with autism, they've actually discovered that children with autism, they do better on a gluten free, dairy free diet. Mm. Their cognitive response, their cognitive abilities improves. I found that this one, I have a research paper on it that I saw, you know, from, um, I think, British Medical Journal, that children on a gluten-free, um, casein-free, they call it the GFCF diet, they fare better in class. So when I started reading this, I knew that I had to put my voice in it. 
In fact, I actually went for a conference last year. I was a speaker on that issue. Mm. It was a, it was for children that have autism. I had to educate them that okay, they're so because you know parents are so like oh uh, biscuits. Um, there's no biscuit that is gluten free. There is no what would I eat? What would mm. I do? I had to mm. start introducing, and that's why I now said, okay, yes, I had to start letting them know that your children can even take oats. Oats are gluten free. Mm. Your tapioca, tapioca granules, which is made in Nigeria, they are gluten free. There are so many things that are gluten free. You don't have to feed them bread. You don't have to feed them. Even we have this um, noodle. It's like it's made of rice. They're available mm. in Nigeria. Mm. If I'd have mm. gone to supermarkets, I buy it for my son. And I go to supermarkets, and even some of the staff in the supermarket, they'll ask me that, oh, God, what do you use this thing for? And that's the staff in the supermarket. They don't even know. So in, in, information needs, people need to be empowered. We need more, we need more, we need more people awareness. to talk. Yeah, yes. we need to create more awareness about these things yes. to help people understand better. Um, so thank you so much for actually reaching out. And this is what I would always say to people, like, like you said, the, the one lesson that like you really hammered on, it's it's fairly it's it's more like it's all encompassing saying that whatever challenges that you're going through is not just for you it is yeah. also because somebody else it like it's like down the line mm. you are going to meet somebody that would have the same challenge that you will be well equipped to help the person yes. because you've been through yes. it you understand the road you be able to say ah i've been here before can i help you can i be your guide can i support you through this season because i've been there myself right so that is very yes. very powerful and i also like the fact that you know you said what is my role in all of this like okay why am i here how can i make a difference no matter how tiny right how can i make mm -hmm. a difference so that you know whatever it is that i'm doing um, it's going to help somebody else. It's going to inform somebody, even if it's the information that they get. It's going to help them make better decisions, right, going forward. So thank you so much for coming out to speak. I feel like um, thank you so you much are, for having you are, me. <laughs> you are so sold out to this cause that you can be on a platform and speak for hours and not get tired of speaking <laughs> and even, especially <laughs> giving. I, I mean, even the way you speak, I know that you're not just speaking from just speaking maybe from what you've read or anything there because every time you speak you remember a story of something that buttress is what you're talking about right so it goes to show how much you're dedicated to this path and and how much impact you really want to make in the lives of people so i celebrate that in you and i'm hoping that you know you have more platforms to be able to talk about this and i'll think about something and see how um, I can also support in pushing that narrative forward because again, I'm not the healthy, um, I'm not so like in, into that space a lot, but you know, I've also come to appreciate like fitness and things like that. And I know that this information would, would be very, very um, useful, would be very useful um, to people who would need it. All right. So yeah. But thank you so much for coming up um, to share your story and to share the lessons that um, this story or your journey so far has taught you. Um, now I know that you are you are a baker and you have um, a couple of uh, products in the market. You know that you that you have created to help people who are with allergies. So gluten free confessionaries and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that and how we can, um, how people can access it. So, I mean, my podcast is a bit all over, right? So yes. I know you're in Nigeria, so, um, but just speak to me so that those who are in Nigeria can benefit from it. But again, it's, you know, I don't know. You never can tell <laughs> if somebody yeah. outside yes. of Nigeria yeah. might also feel like, yes. oh, okay, let us, let us point this guy out. Let mm. us check him out and see what he's up to. So tell us about your product and 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 then and how people can and can get a hold of it. Okay. So I mean, like I said, I run a bakery, and of course, by virtue of my son, I had to start looking for alternatives because he has to celebrate his birthday. And I mean, there was no product out there that was that could cater to his own special needs. So I had to develop my own recipes. So, but I discovered that I wanted something that was readily available for children. And then what I discovered is that most, what is that one thing that children take to school most of the time, apart from that? Biscuits. 
children must have because they, they most times now children have their snack time and they have their they have i think they have two breaks they have short break long break so the, maybe the short break they have their cookies or biscuits or chin chin with their drink and then the long break they have their main meal so i said okay and of course the ones that we saw in the nigerian markets were foreign and most of the time okay foreign first of all sometimes not readily available then another thing the cost you know, I mean, a woman that, let's say, she sells, she buys her cookies, let's say, 50, 100 naira, for you to tell her to be buying 1,000 naira cookie for snack time, she'll say no. It's, I might as well just scrap it. And it's not fair when a child is in the class and every other child is having their own cookies and he can't have any. So I said, okay, let me just concentrate on making gluten-free cookies using locally sourced materials things that I know that I can readily get. So I started making cookies. So I have four varieties of cookies right now. I have my cinnamon crunch cookies, which is like my best seller. I have my chocolate chip cookies. I have my ginger spice cookies and I have my dark fudge cookies. So of course, these cookies, it was tired. I, I mean, with years of trial and of course, using my son as my guinea pig <laughs> because I had to make sure <laughs> he likes it. I don't just want to put out something that just because you don't have, you know, I, I don't just put out an alternative that, okay, since you can't take cookies, have this. I wonder something that at least you know you're not missing out. So even my friends, family members, when I tell them that these are made with locally sourced grains, they don't believe it. So for now, we're still working on getting them on stores. So what I do now is that you can reach me on my social media handle, basically my Instagram handle, you know, and that's if you're the baker, just like my name is. And most times what they do is that people send me DMs. So I supply people, I supply families. Then also um, from time to time, maybe if anyone, because I have a lady also, she has gluten allergies. So sometimes she sends me DMs that she wants, maybe some confectionery. So I also cater to uh, private needs also. So personal needs, maybe you want something, maybe bread, you want pastry, you want a cake for your child who is gluten, who has gluten sensitivity. So people can also DM me. So for now, it's through the DM. I, I get okay. my orders. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, that's, <laughs> are you, <laughs> are you ready for the DMs? Like what if like oh, there, there is a the... floodgate of heaven and then their DMs are rushing in. I hope you're ready to get all the orders. And, oh, yeah, and we're get... always ready. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome this has been a fantastic conversation um Thank you. I, I i look forward to maybe you know having you on another platform or maybe come back again to speak more to 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 this topic and everything because again because i see your passion and your desire to really give out information to educate and sensitize the people on what is yes. so that they are able to make better decisions when it comes to food and not give up totally or mystify what actually mm. has a solution because you know with allergies some people are like ah there's nothing they can do about it but actually there's something mm. you can do about it and there is knowledge that you need to know to help you know what to do about your allergies or your baby's yes. allergy all right so thank you so much um for that thank you Baker. thank you thank you thank you for being here all right guys this is the end of this series and thank you so much for being with us i really do hope that you've learned a thing or two and i hope that you are going to from now on pay attention to what you're eating even if you do not have an allergy right even if you do not have an allergy please ensure that at least you are paying attention to what you are getting from these stores try and understand what the ingredients are for so that you know what works for your body and you are taking in the right thing and please also remember that supplements are <laughs> are your friends right because again unless you are sure that you're taking all your vitamins and you're having you know a, ba a very balanced diet you're very sure then fine but if you're not sure then one way to supplement those vitamins that are missing is to actually be on supplements all right so maybe someday we're going to bring this effect back since he's a pharmacist right or we're going to have more pharmacy coming to tell us okay what kind of supplements are for what so that you know we also know what to do because there's so, <laughs> so many supplements out there so like how do i know so does it mean that for every vitamin 
I would have one supplement that I'll be taking. So I have vitamin C, I have vitamin B complex, I have vitamin E, omega-3, this one, cranberry juice, probiotics, how many days? Does it that feel like I want drugs? <laughs> right. So um hopefully if you want us to do that, actually, I'm 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 hope I'm open to uh, playing my own tiny role in that. If you want us to do that, like bring on pharmacists to come, you know, just share their knowledge in this regard to help you make the right decision, please send me an email and I'll make that happen for you. Thank you one more time for being on the show today. This is the Energetic EJ and this is the Stretch Street Podcast. I'm going to leave all of Ife the Baker's detail in the description of this video and of the audio podcast so you can go check him out. And if you want to make an order, it's especially if you're in Nigeria, please do go ahead and make an order and tell them, oh, I saw you on Stretch Street Podcast. <laughs> Maybe that's when we'll make him give you some discounts, okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. Till I come here again next week with yet another story. Remain amazing, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you for watching today's episode. I really do hope that you found it valuable. All right. If you did, please visit us again next week when we will put out another episode. In case you forgot at the beginning or at the middle, <laughs> now is a good time to click on the subscribe button, turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any of our episodes. All right. Till we come your way again next week, remember also to read the description of this video for any links that might be there that would help you or also help you support the work that we do here, all right? I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.